to this lecture. We are continuing the design of horn antenna. So, before going to that actual problem, let us also find for the given horn since we have started that example, what will be the gain of this horn. You see I said that typically we use up to 10 lambda um, the flares. So, here it is 5.5 and it is oh sorry how much it is you, uh, yes you see it is 5.5 lambda naught it is 2.75 lambda naught. So, there will be some gain. So, let us find out gain. So, our formula says d actually d and g are same for horn. So, d is 6.4 a dash b dash by lambda naught square. So, you will if you put all these values you will get something like 96.8 is the directivity. So, which is almost this 19.86 dB. Okay. Now, here actually uh, this is one formula, another formula is there which um, also is used. So, that formula is uh, somewhat empirical uh, and uh, this formula also gives you good thing, but just in case someone wants to use it another formula is available uh, that gives something like this. So, he, here you see that this formula otherwise simple, but this L e and L h they are the um, they represent respectively the losses in d b due to phase errors in the e and h planes of the horn, because you do not know what is the value of a dash b dash. So, this is given and so what they do for these two planes they also have some new variables s which is b dash square by 8 lambda rho 1 and another variable is t this is not time t this is a constant for these things a dash square by 8 lambda rho 2 rho 1 rho 2 are their meanings. So, that means basically I can say that this is the h plane and this is the uh, thing and what they uh, no this is the e plane and this is the h plane horns things and some graphs are available where they give loss due to phase errors in db versus this variables s or t both. Now, generally they are 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.21 and the graphs are something like this. This is L how I wrote L e as a function of S, this is L h as a function of t. So, from these graphs from your because if a dash and b dash are known these things can be calculated S and t. So, from the graphs you can find out the losses. So, if we do that for the same problem then the we can check whether our that value is near. So, if you do that for the given things s will be something like 0.1575 and t is turn out to be 0 0.63 from the graphs uh, you will see that l e is 0 0.2 d b 
and LH is 2.75 dB. So, if you put that you get 18.93 dB. So, already you see instead of this our that first formula that gave us 19.86 dB. So, that is not so of the mark. Uh, so, what we will do there is also another formula I will not go into that. So, people use various designers like various formulas just to mention I am writing the third formula is pi lambda square by 32 a b then d e into d h. You see remember this is a b the feed guide d is the directivity of the e plane horn d h is the directivity of the h plane horn. So, by that also people find out, but our that formula is effective. So, with that formula now you see problem is how I find out that which direction to flare more whether I will put more flare on e side or more flare on h side etcetera. That means, what will be my a dash b dash? Suppose the problem is a gain is specified that I want so much gain from the uh, pyramidal horn, uh, the feed waveguide dimension is known. Now, how I do the flare? So, that will now attempt that is the actual design problem. So, and here we will have to fix a formula. So, we take that same formula that we used that is a very likable formula simply this was our uh, standard formula. Now, I will just manipulate this formula. I can write like this and then I will say that let us look at H plane horn, H plane horn. It is pi A dash by lambda naught ten of is less than 3 pi by 4 this maximum that phase are committing. Obviously, generally people go for this maximum thing. So, that gives 10 pi h by 2 is almost 2 10 h 4 by 4 and this is equal to 3 lambda naught. You see the geometry from that you can derive it and so this is equal to a dash by 2 divided by rho 2 and that we are approximating to a dash by 2 by rho h. How we are doing that? Because if you see rho 2 and rho h means if I get those h plane design. So, what I am saying for long horns rho 2 and rho h this I am approximately saying same. For long horns, you can dig because this part is okay. Similarly, for E plane horns, oh, I have not completed this. So, 10 anything. So, from here I can say that 10 this. So, A dash will be approximately 3 
lambda naught rho h from here you see e plane horn let us come. So, pi b dashed by lambda naught ten pi e by 4 is less than pi by 2 that says that ten pi e by 2 is lambda naught by b dashed and that is b dashed by 2 by rho e. So, we can say that b dashed will be almost equal to 2 lambda naught rho e. This is our we are relating basically a dashed and b dashed to rho e and rho h. So, from this formula now I will be able to write that this is equal to 2 pi by lambda naught square square root 3 rho naught a 2 to 2 rho naught by 1. Okay. So, I am writing g is 2 pi by lambda naught square 3 lambda naught rho h 2 lambda naught rho e. This is gain is completely related to rho e and rho h. Now, I enforce on this or uh, another condition for this I will have to satisfy that if I choose this rho, is, rho e and rho h the horn should be physically realizable. That means, I will have to now I, I put it here this I will use later. Now, I will put that p e and should be equal to p h that means, where I left that time b dashed minus b root over rho e by b dashed square minus 1 by 4 is equal to a dashed minus a root over rho h by a dashed square minus 1 fourth. Okay. This condition I am putting in the g formula. This rho e rho h and in this if I put I get an equation like this, because here you that is up to you, you find out either for rho e or rho h you rho h you express in terms of g and rho e also you express in terms of g. Here you put in place of rho e this in place of rho h this. So, that will give you a formula where you will get uh, putting that into this you get something like this a complicated formula to I will introduce a new variable xi minus b by lambda whole square 2 xi minus 1 is equal to g by 2 pi root over 3 by 2 pi 1 by root over lambda minus a by lambda whole square into g square by 6 pi cube 1 by xi minus 1. So, I have indicated that this, but ultimately after a bit manipulation because this is required because when you do I did actually. So, just before this lecture I did. So, unless and until you be there you will not be able to go to the next one. So, final formula is from here after a bit more manipulation 2 x minus b by lambda whole square into 2 
xi minus 1 is equal to g by 2 root 2 pi 1 by j x minus a by lambda whole square into g square by 18 pi square 1 by x minus 1. Same formula only some more constants. Now, what is xi? Xi is important, it is rho e by lambda. And so, what is uh, or I should have said uh, x is this and so rho h by lambda becomes g square by 24 pi square 1 by xi. So, you can say that the uh, you see rho e is proportional to x and rho h is inversely proportional to x, but the best thing is this is actually my design formula, because here you see that I have only two variables g and xi other things are known a b are known to me the, those are feed wave guide thing. So, the specification will give me g I will find xi from xi I will find rho e as well as rho h and from rho e and rho h I will go back to a dashed and b dashed that already guarantees me that physically constructed. So, my that um, uh, confusion that how to choose whether a dash more or b dash more actually you see they are counterbalanced here that for a given xi rho e is proportional and rho h is inversely proportional. So, that is difficult to do initially, but you can do it. Now, the point is this equation does not have a solution. So, iteratively we will have to solve it. What you will have to do? This has two two sides, you will have to always say suppose from a given um, specified gain you find xi, put it here. You find xi means you start with a xi, you put it here, you find out which side is uh, less accordingly you either increase xi or decrease xi. So, go on doing that finally, when you are more or less equated this that is your final answer. So, I will write the steps. So, this equation is this is the I will say horn design equation very important equation. And now I will write horn design steps. Horn design steps. Step one. I will say that from specified gain. find x from the equation, but you cannot do because this equation you cannot solve. So, what you do starting x and xi starting xi that you take as g by 2 pi root 2 pi. Then put in this equation, check LHS RHS, step 2 I will say find left hand side of the equation of design equation and RHS of design equation 
if LHS is less than RHS, you can see LHS is less. So, you see here x is coming in the numerator, here x is coming in the denominator. So, the obvious choice is if LHS is less than RHS, increase xi and if greater then decrease xi. So, iteratively come to x final xi uh, final. Okay. The moment you do that then you will find next step is you will get your find rho e rho h because they are directly from the defining things from these equations you get rho e and rho h and once you know rho e you can uh, find out b dashed once you know rho h you can find a dash. So, let us do it for that or let us take a problem to underscore how we do it. And finally, also you can do one thing I will say that after this I should add another step that step 4 is check for physical realizability because whether that is achieved that you can you should check. Though we have taken it in the, that guarantee is inbuilt, but you should check because when you have found out the final one uh, there may be slight error. So, that should not be such that your mechanical tolerance will not be able to handle that. So, for that this final check also should be there. So, the problem is design an optimum gain x band, x band means 8.2 to 12.4 gigahertz horn. So, that its gain is 22.6 dB at 11 gigahertz. The horn is fed by a WR90 waveguide. And this WR90 waveguide has the inner dimension of the waveguide is sorry A is 0.9 inch and B the narrower dimension is 0.4 inch. So, from here we can get what is the absolute because gain is given in. So, we are starting the design what is gain 22.6 dB that if I put to absolute thing it is 181.97 or 182 and what is my lambda naught it is 2.7273 centimeter centimeter and this a by lambda is 0 0.8382 and b by lambda is 0 0.3725 now the first step is we can we'll have to start the iterations so zeta start that will be 181.97 by 2 pi into root 2 pi. So, that will give me 11.5539. Then you go on doing the iteration you will see that initially the LHS is greater than RHS. So, you will have to decrease now that decrease you finally, do um, when I did I got x final is something like 11.1157.
so started room 11.55 got it 11.11 so that gives me a rho e of rho e simply from here you can find rho e will be xi into a lambda so it will be 11. Point, you see rho e is xi into lambda 11.1157 lambda so that is 30.316 centimeter or 11.935 inch hmm. rho h if you calculate 12.0094 lambda so that is 32.753 centimeter 12.895 inch from here you can calculate a dash what is a dash 3 lambda naught rho 2 already I showed for long horns 3 lambda naught rho h. So, rho h I have found here. So, it becomes 16.37 centimeter or 6.445 inch and b dashed is root over 2 lambda naught rho 1 that is 2 lambda naught rho e that is 4.715 lambda naught that is 12.859 centimeter or 5.063 inch and if I check P e is equal to 10.005 lambda or 27.286 centimeter 10.743 inch and same as P h. So, that will be a from the open ended waveguide mount there will be a flaring of 10 inch, 10 inch is quite long for an X band. Okay. So, this completes the design of a pyramidal horn. Now, actually you see that uh, the face field uh, actually the since uh, horn aperture has a large dimension both the narrow dimension and uh, they have been flared. So, there will be sizable amount of cross polarization generated you know this that in a dominant mode waveguide we keep the because of the narrowness of the things we keep the cross pole low, but the moment that gets flared there will be cross poles cross polarization components start getting generated. So, there are sizable cross poles in the any pyramidal horn. So, that uh, creates in certain cases some problem and also in the there are sizable since the large aperture there are reflection and diffraction etcetera. So, horns that is why they do not have very high efficiency though the uh, I am not saying that loss is there more, but due to this cross pole there are losses which are the polarization losses. So, that is why efficiency of uh, horns are typically 50 to 60 percent. So, to improve this efficiency to 75 to 80 percent um, in particularly in radiometer applications distance um, star ray thing people use better horns with 75 80 percent things 
those are called corrugated horns. Actually, what happens? These cross poles they get generated. So, if that cross poles can be suppressed, then the purity polarization purity improves. So, the what happens in this is the horn. So, inside the horns actually when this is a side view corrugation means you know that corrugated sheet etcetera. So, some protrusion some metallic protrusion actually these are metallic protrusions uh, like this these are metallic structures. So, these structures actually makes those cross polarization things absorbs. So, uh, this protrusions its dimension etcetera by manipulating that you can cut those things those are called the, the corrugated horns. And also I want to say that there is a concept called face center. Actually um, each of the far field radiated by antenna can be written in a general form that E far field far is Now, what is this? You see this is an amplitude function. So, that means, far field has an variation with theta phi that is amplitude function and this is the phase function. Now, in tracking or navigation landing system etcetera, it is required to assign to the antenna a reference point that actually from a point uh, from which point antenna's radiation is coming. Now, actually in this type of aperture antennas, uh, there is no such point because the point is possible only for a spherical waves. These aperture antennas generally do not produce spherical waves. They produce their line sources of cylindrical waves, but uh, for reference purposes a hypothetical point is assumed. So, what is that point? That reference point should have a characteristic that for a given frequency this psi theta phi that means this phase function this should be independent of theta and phi. That means, whatever theta phi I look at that point this psi theta phi. So, that means, psi theta phi should appear to be a constant from that point. for a given frequency this is independent of theta phi this point is called the. So, uh, the point at which this is valid that is called the phase center of the antenna. So, when reference to the phase center the fields radiated by the antenna are considered to be spherical waves with equiphase surfaces. For practical antennas such as array reflector and others, a, fingil, a single phase center valid for all theta and phi does not exist. However, in many systems a point can be found for which this constant for most of theta and phi especially the main lobe theta and phi range. For reflector speed the antenna's face center is put at the focus that we will see later because if otherwise how you determine focus. So, that is why you need to know the face center that means, the point from where you can think that antenna's radiation is coming. Usually the face center of the horn is not located at its mouth, mouth means where from it starts this is look at this is the mouth, this is the aperture, it is not at the mouth, not at the aperture, but actually B 
between the imaginary apex and aperture. So, this is the aperture, this is the imaginary apex, the face center is somewhere here. The exact location of the face center of the horn depends on its flare angle. For large flare angle, face center is closer to apex. As flaring decreases, the face center moves towards aperture. So, where is the face center of the open ended waveguide, which is nothing but flaring is 0. So, that is why it is at the aperture. With that, I hope that you will be able to design a horn yourself. Already we have seen how to design the dipoles etcetera particularly folded dipoles etcetera. So, you have a fairly good amount of knowledge from this. Another antenna aperture antenna that is very useful that is dish antenna which is used in uh, nowadays all the even TV receptions, but invariably used in satellite communications etcetera where we want uh, not 60 70 percent efficiency something like 90 percent efficiency. So, that we will see in the next class that what is the those things we will not see in details because that detail thing is quite involved, but we will see that what are the salient features of those antennas there are various efficiency concepts how to do that and then uh, what is the gain of that system given the geometry that we will see. And then we will see actually that if you do not have a this type of uh, known antennas, but you have designed an antenna or you are given an antenna how to analyze that if time permits we will also take up that issue. Thank you.